In this lecture, I'd like to talk about the genetics of cancer. We're going to talk about oncogenes, tumor suppressors, and aneuploidies. Um, but the first thing I really want to point out, so much that I've uh, titled the lecture this, is that cancer is uncontrolled cell division. Cell division when there shouldn't be cell division. So we've talked about how different cells with the same DNA can have very different phenotypes. Over here we have a, a blood cell and a neuron that could be from the same person, and yet these two cells with very different DNA have totally different shapes, different functions, and different phenotypes. Well, different cells also have uh, different rates of division. Um, so early in embryogenesis, and for certain parts of uh, certain tissues that are actively proliferating, uh, human cells will divide every 24 hours or so. Um, and then we have other cells in our body, particularly as adults, uh, that will, are basically done div dividing. They will never divide. And so just like other, the other cell differences, uh, these differences in rate of division are regulated. And so this is, if this is the cell cycle, uh, then that means we have proteins encoded by genes uh, that are either saying go, like continue through the cell cycle, continue to divide, or stop, arrest, don't divide, don't go through mitosis. Um, and so if we're looking at a dividing cell here in mitosis, we see that we have these machines, microtubules and centrosomes. Um, and it's worth remembering that these are made up of themselves of proteins, which are encoded by genes. And so one way that we can control uh, mitosis and other processes in the cell cycle uh, is to control these genes. So in order to form a centrosome, we need uh, expression of the relevant proteins. I've just called them, colored them three different genes uh, with three different colors. And these genes need to be on. Um, and these genes are regulated, as you could guess. We don't want to be forming centrosomes when we're not dividing, uh, only when we're undergoing mitosis. And so they are regulated, and they could be positively regulated and negatively regulated. And so the genes that, neg that positively regulate it we are one class of our, our go proteins that are saying go, divide. Uh, so we can also have, um, in, the, in, in also our stop, our stop proteins then would be those that are going to shut down this process um, and stop formation of the proteins and so stop formation of the centrosomes um, and stop cell division. And so these end up being pretty complex regulatory circuits. Here, each one of these things is a, a gene encoding a protein uh, that are cross-regulating. Um, and all these different processes that are being regulated, apoptosis, apoptosis in particular, um, active repression of the S phase, um, and the different factors that are involved. I just want to show this diagram to show that the regulatory relationships can be quite complex. We're going to simplify them here uh, in order to really uh, hone in on the function of cancer. Sorry about that little break. Um, so in proliferating tissues, that means that we'll have the go state with things on and actively undergoing mitosis, uh, whereas in non-proliferating tissues, we'll be in the stop state. And I'm simplifying things somewhat because we don't want to have the centrosome on the whole time. So even in proliferating tissues, the centrosome will, will uh, get produced and then divide, and then we'll have to wait until we duplicate our DNA, and then produce and divide again. And so then we can think of cancer as what we get when the GO proteins are expressed at the wrong time, when we have cells that are, whose growth is supposed to be regulated, uh, but instead they're undergoing rapid division. Um, so, so this raises some questions. What kinds of processes are actually being regulated by GO and stop proteins? We talked about the centrosome here, but there are a bunch more. Um, and how do we go from having a healthy cell to one in which the GO and stop proteins are turned on at the wrong times? Um, so one question would be, so, so why do cells want to stop? Um, so one possibility is there's enough of the cell type. So in an adult skin cell, say, or... Um, certain cells in adults, um, there's no more need for additional cells of that type, uh, so we don't need to divide to make more. Uh, and then another po another possibility is that even if it's a cell um, which, which is going to divide, we don't want to divide that cell until we're ready to. We don't want to divide the cell until the DNA is copied uh, and until the chromosomes are lined up. 
And then the final thing is if the cell has DNA damage. So um, DNA is a physical molecule and it can be damaged. Um, and this can lead to mutations that can be harm harmful. So if this has occurred, we want to wait um, before we go through cell division until that DNA damage has been fixed. And one thing we won't be talking about so much in this lecture, but I want to point out, uh, is we also want another, another kind of stop. One kind of stop is just don't do anything. Wait till it's fixed. Uh, but another stop can be um, if the cell is so damaged that um, we want the cell to undergo death so that it won't cause further problems. So this brings us to the, the concept of checkpoints. Um, so let's see what we're looking at here. So this is the cell cycle. So um, this, this is mitosis. This is when actually the, the division occurs. Then we have a waiting phase, and then we have the synthesis phase where we, we're um, synthesizing new DNA, replicating our DNA. And then a second waiting phase, which we call gap. We call this gap one, gap two, uh, and then mitosis. And so what all these boxes are showing us are the, um, the different checkpoints. Um, and so let's start here with uh, this, uh, the S phase checkpoint. So this one is going to check for uh, DNA damage and replication. So just as we were discussing, um, to make sure that uh, we don't exit S phase until the job is done. Right, so these are gonna help us control cell division and protect against changes in the genome. Um, so, uh, so for instance, um, let's think about what would happen uh, if we uh, if we don't duplicate all our chromosomes. So, if we don't duplicate all our chromosomes, then we're only going to end up with one copy here of our orange chromosome. So, when the cell divides, we're going to have one cell that will get the one of our daughter cells that will get the orange chromosome, but the other one will be lacking it. Um, In the M checkpoint, something that we uh, that is checked for is that the chromosomes are attached to the spindle. So let's see what we mean by that. So here we have the spindle, the microtubules, um, and we should have both chromosomes attached to them. Um, and if we don't, if there's asymmetric attachment, then when the cells divide, uh, we can end up with one cell that has two copies of this blue chromosome and one cell that has no copies of it. Or uh, if neither, if this chromosome is attached to neither spindle, um, then we when we divide, this may actually end up between cells or may randomly divide. Um, okay, so if we start with non-proliferating tissues, um, how do we get from this healthy state uh, where we have suppression of the cell cycle um, to here where we have the cell cycle going at the wrong time. Well, let's start by recognizing that this stop protein that we've been using is itself encoded by a gene. And so um, a major way that we're going to lose control, that we're going to go from a healthy cell to a cancerous cell is by somatic mutations. So to remind you, uh, somatic mutations are the ones that happen in just a subset of our cells um, during development. And so if this gene is mutated, then we're no longer going to be making stop protein and we're no longer going to be suppressing our go protein, which is then going to get turned on and it will stimulate itself and it will also come down and stimulate all our other factors. And now suddenly we're making all our go proteins because we no longer have a stop protein. Another possibility is that we can have a mutation in our regulation of our go protein so here we have a, a mutation in the binding site where it's being negatively regulated by our stop protein. Uh, and so now this protein can start to be expressed um, and then it can actually uh, express and start to compete with and perhaps turn on some of our other GO genes. So a thing that's worth pointing out here is once we start having these problems, once we have progression through the abnormal progression through the cell cycle, we can get more problems. So um, if we are, if the check, a, a, a lot of what will get mutated in cancers are the proteins that are involved in these checkpoints. And so here, for instance, if we lose the genes that are involved in checking for DNA damage, well, then we can exit S phase and continue into cell division uh, with damaged DNA. So 
our first mutations can lead to even more mutations. This can also lead to more, more chromosome level changes. As we said, if we have uh, division before DNA is replicated, um, or if our, our spindles uh, are not attached to our chromosomes, um, then we can actually lose whole chromosomes from the cell. Um, so what are the consequences of this? So if we have a, a situation where we end up with a cell that does not have the correct uh, complement of chromosomes, what do we expect to happen? Well, this is a human somatic cell, so though I haven't drawn it out here, if we have one copy of the blue chromosome, then somewhere else in the cell we expect to have a second copy, the other allele. Um, so there is another copy, but the problem now is that we only have one mutation that's needed. Um, and the same thing if not all chromosomes are attached, now we end up with a cell that does not have uh, two copies of this chromosome. And we're going to call this aneuploidy. This is a word worth knowing. Aneuploidy, which means abnormal chromosome complement. So actually both of these cells now are aneuploid uh, because this one has an extra copy of the blue chromosome and this one is missing a, crop, a copy. And so one way to think about this, so um, we actually have two copies of each of the genes that we've been discussing. Um, and so usually uh, in a cell, if we get one mutation that disables one of our stop genes, we'll still have the second stop gene to continue make, making the stop protein to repress the appropriate genes. However, if we lose one whole copy of our chromosome, then that means we lose a bunch of these different genes. And so now this cell only has one copy. It's effectively haploid. And so now all we need is a single mutation. So basically, once we've lost the second copy, this cell is particularly vulnerable to ongoing mutations. And so when you look uh, at cancer cells, you see this. So here we're looking at a normal cell, chromosome 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. Um, and, and we're using a technique called, uh, called FISH here, uh, fluorescent in situ hybridization, which allows us to identify uh, with different fluorescent colors the different, the different genes, the different sequences on each of these chromosomes. So this is what it would look like in a normal healthy cell. And then over here, uh, we see our cancerous cell. So we see a bunch of things. Chromosome 1 here, we've got three copies. Uh, and chromosome 15, we've lost half of a copy. Chromosome 20, it looks like we've lost half of a copy. Chromosome 22, we've lost one copy. Um, and the other thing that we see are these fused copies. So this looks like uh, chromosome 1 has been fused to part of, I guess it's chromosome 7. So this, this chromosome 1 is actually now a hybrid chromosome with part of chromosome 1 fused to a different chromosome. So this is typical if you look at karyotypes of cancer cells that you see that there are all these fusions, losses, and gains of chromosomes. And so here's what we've discussed. Um, important changes in, chromosome, uh, in cancer include somatic mutations, and we talked about two major kinds of them. So we have disabling mutations that knock out our tumor suppressors or our stop genes, um, and then we have mutations that disrupt negative regulation of our GO genes, which we're going to call oncogenes. So this is just here in this slide, with tumor suppressors are the stop genes, oncogenes are the GO genes. Um, we have chromosomal aneuploidies, um, where we lose a chromosome, leading to only one functional copy, leaving us vulnerable to mutation. And finally, that there's positive feedback. The more of these mutations that we have, uh, the more additional changes that will occur because our surveillance systems down, so it's, uh, our surveillance systems are down, uh, leaving us with additional problems.